What's going on people, it's your boy 40. Now, still recovering over yesterday's defeat. Still a bit one to take. Not only did we exit the Carabao Cup, but again, it's our third defeat on the trot against the championship side of Nottingham Forest's calibre. Now, I don't know where we're going to go from this. Obviously, we've got West Ham coming up. That's a crucial fixture already. They're not doing too well either. Their manager's feeling the strains of, you know, not only doing well in the transfer window, but of course the results have not been going their way. So it's kind of good that we've got this game coming up because again, if we had a top four side, God, we would be going from borderline depressing to wanting to call the season off right now. So <laughs> I suppose we've got to look at the positives. We've got a couple of players possibly coming back. Florent Lejeune might be able to make it back. It was too soon for him to come back for the Nottingham Forest game. DeAndre Yedlin might be in within the run-in to come back within the side and boy do we miss him, especially going forward as well. Dwight Gale's still got a sickness bug, so again he might be 50-50 if he can make it make it back or, or in time or not. And then obviously we've got Shelby hopefully serving the last of his match ban or I think he might even have another game to go so again those are the sort of positives that we've got to look for apart from that obviously there's another three points at stake and again a, a really good opportunity to get fans back on side and, and they're starting to believe in this season as well now as I said we've got West Ham coming up so without further ado we're going to take it to the other side of the coin and see how West Ham fans are feeling about this so I've got Charlie here from Hammers Chat and he's going to take us through how their seasons have been going and their preparation to the game on Saturday. What's up everyone, Charlie from Hammers Chat here, a West Ham United fan channel, to talk to you about all things West Ham ahead of the weekend's fixture. It's a big game for both of us. Both of us need points on the board. And your boy Fordy has sent me through some questions. I'm going to answer them for you now, just to give you a little bit of a taster about how we feel ahead of the game. Let's get to it. First question, how has your season been going so far? Terribly, <laughs> terribly, probably even worse than yours. Um, two losses on the bounce, the first one being an absolute rout against Manchester United where we looked about as pointless as a football team could look. Um, second game event, Southampton went better. Um, I don't think they deserved the win, but I don't think we did either. It was a game where the sending off early to Arnautovic decided to elbow someone, sending off early. You could argue if there was 11 men on the pitch, maybe we would have picked it a little bit. But ultimately, I don't think we deserve the win. And, you know, that leaves us bottom of the table. And that's not exactly a place you want to be. It's only two games in, but being rock bottom <laughs> is not a place you want to be. And so we're going to be coming into this game desperate to get some points on board. Second question. Rate your recruitment in the transfer window been pretty good i can't even lie about it it's, it's been a lot better than uh, most people would have thought our board are known this might sound familiar our board are known for not being the most spending spendy they don't splash that cash very often but they do they have this season they've spent it you know we've bought in on out of it we've broken our record our record transfer um he's out obviously but we broke it nevertheless he's on huge wages hernandez we brought in from uh by leverkusen the former manchester united player of course he might not have broken a bank at only 16 million but he's on 150 grand a week so that's a hell of a lot of money to pay uh, we've brought in zabaleta we've been crying out for a right back for years and so we've gone and got zabaleta on a free transfer old but still a capable replacement a solid steady hand and we've brought in joe hart who for all his detractors is still probably battling to be england's number one and so you can't complain too much about that business you know i might have individual problems with each of them i might not think they were the best options individually but overall you look at the window and you say yeah that's 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 pretty good and and sets us sets us up at least first 11 wise sets us off pretty well for the season next question would you still have Bilic in? Um, yeah, I would personally. I think his first season was so, so good. That gives him a bit of a reprieve. Um, if if we'd have a season like last, two seasons in a row, he'd already be gone. I think is the sad fact of the matter. But that first season was so unbelievably good. And there were a lot of factors about it. We had Payet. We had, it was the last season at Bolin, and so we all had this this hype and euphoria about West Ham that we don't might not have now, but 
it was brilliant and it does he deserves the time to see if he can replicate something close to that um so for me yes but it, it's definitely an issue that is splitting the fan base currently people are starting to say we need a new manager we need to get Bilic out he's not tactically astute enough there's all these problems that people are starting to pick up on but for me and i think for maybe 60 70 percent of the fan base currently it's Bilic in but if we don't beat you if we don't get a good result against you if we don't do well in the cup if we don't do this if we don't do that then it, it's getting to a point now where being billichin is a very difficult thing to do what do you make of rafa to west ham rumors um we were after him when we got billichin that was when we first went for rafa uh, we probably went from before that's a lie but that was when it first sort of popped up in recent memory he chose to go to real madrid <laughs> West Ham or Real Madrid, there's really no option, is there? He should have chose West Ham, but he did. He chose to go to Real Madrid, and he ended that season. He ended it. He ended. It, he started the season at Real Madrid, ended it at Newcastle. Um, I think you've got a great, great man. I think he's a great manager. Um, I think he's a really good manager. Whether he's the right manager for us right now, I don't know. Um, I think we're with our owners. We're just crying out for names. I think we want bigger names more than we want the right guy. Um, and you can see that with someone like Arnautovic who has name recognition because he played in the Premier League, as opposed to maybe going for someone a little bit more unknown who has a higher chance of succeeding or more potential at the end of it. And I think Rafa is that same sort of situation. I think he's going to run up against the same problems he would at West Ham as well as he does at Newcastle. I think he doesn't have the owners that would back him fully in that sense, although maybe they would deem Rafa the right person to back. I don't know. I highly doubt it, but that would be a thing. Whether it happens or not is dependent on a lot of things. Our owners don't tend to fire managers. Um, they tend to let their contracts run out, which it, they like to spin as, no, we've never fired anyone. I mean, you didn't renew his contract. It's part and parcel. It's the same thing. But whether we would pay to get him out of your, the Newcastle contract early, I highly doubt. Um, we'll see. I, I, I highly doubt it will happen. I reckon there's a three out of ten chance of it happening. But if Bilic was to leave, Rafa Benitez fits the criteria of a manager who's everyone name knows, which is the exact sort of thing we would be going for. Formation for Saturday. Um, so we, we've been playing four at the back recently. Uh, last season, we dabbled with three. Arguably, you could say we probably looked better with three at the back. But pre all preseason and the first two games, we've played four at the back. So I suspect we will line up with that at the very least. Um, ahead of that, it gets a bit questionable. I'm not sure. I reckon the chances are we'll play at a 4-3-3 um, with the 4 3 3, and the fact is, is that Lanzini is coming back. Lanzini, is, he will hopefully be back for the Newcastle game, and that'll be his first game back because he is by far and away, in my opinion, our most important player. I think to get the most out of him, you play a 4 2 3 1 with him playing the one sort of just behind the striker, if you will. But we've been playing 4 3 3 consistently, and I suspect we'll see that carry on again with him playing a bit more of a withdrawn role. So I suspect it will be Hart and Ingo, obviously, Zabaleta, Ogbonna. Fonte, Cres Ogbonna, Fonte, Masuaku. No, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. Last minute, I've changed my mind. Hart, Zabaleta, Fonte, Ogbonna, Cresswell. Then I suspect it will be Declan Rice, who's an 18 year old who's just come out of the academy. He's been playing very well of late. Um, not even looked that out of place in, a way in, our, in our team. So I suspect he will probably get the Northern carry on there. Then Lanzini and Mark Noble, just ahead of him. And then the front three will most likely be Antonio Hernandez up front. Antonio on the right, Hernandez up front, and then someone on the left. Seeing as Arnautovic decided to elbow someone, I don't know, to be honest. I'm not 100% certain. But we could see we could see something a little bit different if someone performed, if a youth player performs really well in the cup game. We could see that happen. I'm not sure. But that's how I suspect it. We will line up. The other wild card is, of course, the man with no legs, Andy Carroll. The wild card. He's supposedly going to be back for Newcastle. The amount of times we hear that Andy Carroll's coming back and he doesn't appear is innumerous. So I'm not going to exactly say he will be back. But if he does come back, 
I don't suspect he will start. I still think we would start Hernandez over him, and I think that would be a smart decision. We could start possibly a 4-4-2 or something like that, but he could be a huge impact player. And you guys will know just as well as we do, Andy Carroll is a beastly player when he does play. He's so difficult to handle, and him coming off the bench after being run ragged by the likes of Antonio and Hernandez for a while could be a very big deal. And finally, last question, score prediction. Oh, score prediction. I, we're so impossible to judge. If we turn up, if we have all the things in the right place, if we have Lanzini, if we turn up well, I could see us doing all right. I could see us maybe winning 2-1. I think you'll get a goal regardless of what happens. Whether we win, lose or draw, you will score. And our defence is not good enough to contain anyone at the moment. So I suspect you will get your first Premier League goal against us. But if we turn up, and that's the positive spin I'm going to look at, if we do turn up, I think we might get our first win in the season. I'm going to say 2-1. But to say I'm confident in that is a complete and utter lie. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Fordy for giving me this opportunity to appear on his channel. It's lovely. Make sure you subscribe to it for all of the Newcastle stuff because he does it all the time and he's a good dude. So just, you know, subscribe. Um, also, if you want to know about West Ham, come over to Hammers Chat. We do live streams, we do reviews, previews, we do so many different things all of the time. Come and have a look. Even if you're a Newcastle fan, you're always welcome to come and comment on our team, you know, get involved with the community we've got. We've even got a website, hamschat.com. We've got a big old forum bustling with people ready to tell you that you're wrong. Come over, come check it out. Thank you so much once again, Fordy. And yeah, cheers. Thank you for watching. Last one, Charlie. Cheers for that. So that's it, guys. We've got the big game on Saturday against West Ham. Three o'clock kickoff. I won't be doing my preview until after the Rafa Benitez press conference on Friday, which usually takes place around about 1.30. So I'll be doing it Friday evening uh, just to see what he's going to be talking about and obviously finalising any injuries, any possible signings that we get in lastminute.com. Um, but yes, thank you very much and I'll see you guys all soon.